Hi, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of Two Opinionated, where I'm thrilled to have actor, writer, comedian, John Lear with me. Welcome, John. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's, yeah, uh, thank it's, you so much for doing this. This is oh, a, God. a real treat. Oh, uh, <laughs> likewise. It's good. Hey, listen, it's good to have something to do, too. You know, we're both Isn't sitting around our houses. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get to the point, you just want a little bit of contact with somebody. Right. Right. Thank God for Zoom. Thank God for, you know, uh, Skype and all of these things. Oh, Cause yeah. I have, I've been able to stay in touch with people. Um, but yeah, it sure is a weird time. Man. It's, it's strange. We've got, um, two new, uh, grandbabies and wow, you know, we're not able to really, oh, thank you. But we're not able to interact with them. So we're, we go visit them every few days, but we're, we're having to talk to them through a screen door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Door. Yeah. They're too young to understand what's going on. They're just wondering, yeah. aren't you coming in? <laughs> right. I know. There, we have a couple of neighbors down the street with two young kids, and uh, I, I'm really friendly with them. And they're like, John, hey. And I'm like, hi. I'm <laughs> staying over here. Nobody knows what to do. We had a neighborhood uh, cocktail party but uh, on somebody's front lawn down the street where we all sat, you know, eight feet apart from each other <laughs> in this big, weird circle. That's kind of neat. Yeah, it worked. It worked. So yeah, You're, people are trying whatever they can. Well, I'd say there's some positives I think that could come yeah. out of this. Yeah. You know, hopefully yeah. we we learn to appreciate each other a little more and maybe the environment gets cleaned up. Well, I mean, that's what they say, right? Like yeah. the the smog and, and stuff is clearing up. <laughs> Turns out humans are filthy, filthy creatures. Right, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't the know who world is in charge. Yeah, I think the world is much happier when we lock ourselves up in our little. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, John, I, I I guess we should start with uh, you know let let me let you introduce yourself and and kind of talk a little bit about how you got into you know the entertainment business. Okay, well. Um... I'm a, I'm an actor and a writer. I'm all comedy. I produce too. I'm probably most widely known as the Geico Caveman yeah. from uh, the Geico Caveman commercials, uh, which were awesome and love yeah. doing them. And uh, a big part of who I am is that I improvise a lot. That's kind right. of my, and how I got into show business was through improv. Um, and so a lot of the Geico spots are, are improvised or they really? have lines. Some of the, some of the most famous lines were uh, lines that they just let me improvise and then they cut out the best ones and, and, and put them on. I did um, probably 25 national spots, which is wow. thank you, Geico. Thank you, <laughs> Geico. Uh, <laughs> well, the, the one I remember is, is did, then you hold the, you hold, held the boom mic or you had something to do with the boom yeah. mic. That was the very first one was the boom mic. Uh, there was a, a, it was a Geico commercial and then you'd hear it, it, it. And that was when he said that the spokesman said, it's so easy a caveman can do it. And then it widened out and you <laughs> saw that the boom guy was a caveman, which was me. And I threw the boom mic down and said, uh, not cool and, and stormed off. Yeah, uh, right. And that was, I mean, I did that commercial and I didn't think very much of it. I, I mean, I was glad to have the yeah. job. I mean, um, and, uh, you know, but I didn't really think, and then they called me to do another one and another one. And, and my wife Googled it. Uh, <laughs> and she was like, you know, I think this caveman thing is a big deal. <laughs> and cause there were, you just Google Geico caveman and just, oh, yeah. uh, the pages and pages of people commenting and, and it just got to be this huge, um, crazy, you know, uh, cultural phenomenon for uh, about 10 years there, five, about five solid years. And then it, it took about 10 years before it petered out, but man, it was, it was, I mean, the money was amazing. I loved the job, the crew, everybody, the makeup was, uh, really uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> and how, how long did it take to put on? It takes three hours to put it on. No, thank uh, and so it's kind of like going to the dentist, you know, you just have to lay there and people touch you, touch your face, which um, I found that human beings don't like oh. to have stuff glued to our faces. Uh, 
but you know, anytime I got whiny, I just reminded myself that it's, I'm not working a real job and this is amazing. And, uh, you know, it, it was, it was just a great job. And, um, uh, I loved all the people and I, I worked with and it was so much fun. We did, a, we did a couple of dozen of those spots. I, and then we also did all kinds of these other opportunities kind of shot out of it. They, they would have, um, like for uh, the, during the Oscars, so the uh, so there's the Oscars that we all watch on TV. But then, right. it, what's really the big deal in Hollywood are the after parties because that's where all of the dealing and we, wheeling and dealing happens. That's where all the people turn out. So there's like famous fancy Oscar, like the Vanity Fair Oscar party. Anyway, the, these parties are right. huge and hard as hell to get into. Well, the Geico Caveman was invited to a few of these heavy-duty A-list parties. And, and Geico was like, yeah, we're going to take advantage of this. So they put me in the makeup and put me in a tuxedo and hired a, a gorgeous model to escort me to all of these uh, parties. And it was so funny because I came into those parties and the stars freaked out. They were like fans of the Geico, right. you know, here I am seeing all of these famous people and behind the makeup, I'm like, oh my God. And they, but they're more freaked out over me. Like I remember John Voight literally pushing people out of the way to have a, a picture with the Geico caveman. And wow. uh, on my Facebook page, I have a, a picture of me with Gary Busey, but yeah. I've seen that one. yeah and so, and that was from that night and they, it was amazing. <laughs> and I was yeah, just like, great. I'm, I'm like, listen, you know, I'm not real. You know, I'm a <laughs> goofball with stuff. They didn't care. They did not care. So did you yeah, make was, any connections while you were, you know, entertaining? Well, not really, because I I felt like, well, because I, I was in character the yeah, whole time. Right. You know, I had to be the Geico caveman. And I don't know, I just I didn't I'm not really good at schmoozing anyway. Uh I've never networking has never been my A game. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, no, I just played. A, I just tried to crack them up, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what an experience too. Because you, did you run into anybody that you were a fan of? Oh my God, tons of people. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Brad Pitt. Uh, you know, all. I mean, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, all kinds of people, and I'm just like. But I'm <laughs> I'm I'm in I'm in the character of the caveman, and the caveman is kind of you know, more concerned with himself than other That's people, right. you know, so. Uh, <laughs> That'd probably be hard to do, not to, not to drop character. I think. Yeah. Hey, you, well, good... well, thanks. I mean, the makeup does most of the work, to be honest with you. Anybody could have done it. Uh, even a caveman could have played the caveman. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're just covered in this stuff. So, you know, I mean, teeth, special teeth and all the only thing that was real were my eyes really that was the yeah. only thing that's mine everything else was covered with something yeah that's crazy well so did did that get you in some doors though those commercials did that help you with uh you know well shows I mean, done and yes and no i had kind of my career had was already kind of percolating percolating by that point um I, you know, I had done a show on NBC called Jesse, uh, Jesse starring Apple Kristen Apple. Applegate. And I had done, um, oh, a couple of movies, some for Noah Baumbach. So I was starting to get some stuff. I, I had uh, done episodes of Friends and Lois and Clark and yeah. um, uh, The Sweetest Thing. So I was getting oh, these parts. Thing, yeah. yeah. And so I was getting these parts. But I'll tell you what the caveman thing did was it, it gave me a, a ton of money and was able to get me in a house with my wife and my family and kind of just took for, you know, took the um, edge off of being, of, of having to do things just for money. So I got to kind of right. settle in and for, and take a breath, which is like very few artists get to do, you know, where you're like, okay, now what do I want to do? You know? And, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, uh, that, that makes sense. That was amazing. I mean, that, yeah. that changed my life. Uh, and I was able to, I sold a, a show to TBS called um, uh, 10 Items or Less. I've been yeah. watching that. <laughs> you know, I don't know how I missed it when it was, when it was out, but it's on Crackle. 
Yeah, it's on Crackle. Some and it shifts. It goes from Crackle to Hulu, back to Crackle. But yeah, it's on Crackle right now. It's really funny. Thank you. And it's yeah. it's all improvised. All the dialogue is improv. I wanted to ask you that because yeah. it seemed like it. You know, it, it was. Um, it's either really well acted, or or they're really good at improvisation because it, it. Yeah. It, it it comes across and it's just hilarious. It it rem- it made me think you had. Um, kind of the uh the superstore show before superstore yeah yeah you know, it's kind of a similar premise i know it's a smaller yeah. uh, store you're dealing with yeah but, yeah it's yeah. you know it's a, a work doing a workplace comedy an ensemble workplace comedy you know when my partner nancy Hauer and i my writing partner a producing partner we came up with the idea she actually came up with it first because there was a a, a grocery store strike happening in la and so it was on our minds and, yeah. you know, and, um, and she was like, let's do something with a grocery store. And I was like, oh my God, that's brilliant. Why hasn't there ever been a show in a grocery oh. store? And, and, and I now as, as a person who pitches television shows, you know, years later, anytime yeah. I ask that question, why hasn't this been done before? You know, you've got something great, you know, something right. that, uh, and cause uh, and so anyway, it was just, a, it was a perfect place to shoot. We, the only thing we didn't really think about is how expensive it is to rent out an entire grocery store. <laughs> it's, it's really expensive. And so we ended up having two choices. One was to shoot at night when the store was closed. So you start work, you know, work the graveyard shift. And the other was, to, which we didn't want to do because just doing comedy at at that at turning your oh, clock around like yeah. that it's just it's hard your brain gets i've worked the great graveyard shift as a waiter and it's weird yeah it's no it's uh, no fun yeah it's no fun and you just think differently and everything's wrong and weird and it's it's hard people who can do it are amazing yeah um but <laughs> but, but then we so then we came up with the idea okay let's shoot the show while the grocery store is open for business and that's what we ended up doing so most of the uh, customers that you see in the show who are shopping were just people, oh, that's regular great. people shopping. Yeah. And it wasn't, it was, we did three seasons and it really wasn't until the third season that kind of fans started to figure out where we were shooting and they started to show up. Show up. And, and so <laughs> then it started to become a problem. But prior well, to you, that, well, I'm assuming you weren't actually in Ohio, right? That's, that's no, we were in, uh, no, we were in Encino. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the capital of, of uh, it was us and porn, basically. <laughs> it was being shot out there. Uh, but yeah, we were deep in the valley, just pretending we were in Ohio. Um, I'm from Kansas, so I like doing shows that are set in the Midwest. You know, that's just my sensibility. And uh, uh, so, yeah. We hey, we're them. funny out here. You gotta- yeah, we are. We're we waiting are. for our West Virginia sitcom. There's you. That's know. right. Yeah. Well, you got. Uh. Well, wh- wh- where was Bonanza? Not was it was in Virginia, right? Was it? I Bonanza? think it was in Virginia. Yeah. Okay, in the Virginian. Uh, yep. I guess. Yeah, the Virginian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you, yeah, you guys need a comedy. That's we need true. A comedy. Yeah, you do. You're right. All right, I'll work on it. I'll get on it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're loaded with call centers. If and you, know, there's been a few comedies about call centers but there really hasn't been one that's that's been you know just really funny and and nailed it so, yeah you're well, right it's it you know I, I have you ever done worked as, in a call center 20 years oh my god me i did it you know at actors we've done all all kinds yep. of things <laughs> like that. i remember i was in a customer service call center for in chicago when i was uh, doing theater in chicago and it was a um a, a, a contact lens company that had screwed up miserably. They'd sent the wrong contacts to everybody. This was back when colored contacts had just come out. Oh yeah. And people were livid and they set up a special customer service call in uh, hotline for the people oh, yeah. who were angry. And oh my God, man. Once you do that job, you're never rude to another That's operator exactly right. ever again. I, I started in a uh, credit card call center that oh. it was basically a scam. They, they would target uh, low income individuals and they would give them a $350 credit line, but then they would charge them $160 Jesus. onto the card to start. 
So then they only had $190 to use, but they didn't really explain that part. So, oh. so they would almost immediately overdraw and, and then they would be calling in with these, you know, thousand dollar balances on a $350 limit oh. and not real happy. Yeah. 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 So that, yeah. Was, that was how I got I, into call centers. I always, I feel like I, that if everybody in the country was forced to be a customer service <laughs> person and a waiter, yeah, th this country would be a better place. So much better. Because <laughs> then you realize how rude people can be and you'll never want to be one of them. That's exactly right. Did uh, uh, I saw a lot of the actors that you used previously, you used them again in uh, Quick Draw. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we did 10 items or less for TBS, and that ran three seasons. And then Sony approached us about doing um, an original limited series. They just wanted yeah. 10 episodes of a show for this new, you know, everybody was doing their streaming right. platform. And Sony had just bought this company called Crackle, which, you know, uh, we had never heard of. And they said, would you do, yeah, and they said, would you do a limited series for Crackle? And we did a show called Jailbait. Yeah. Which yeah. is very hard to find because it was... We they, they we asked them, can we do whatever we want? They said yes, and so we <laughs> <laughs> we went for it. And we basically, do you remember that show on HBO called Oz? Oh yeah. That, okay, so we wanted to do a comedy version of Oz, and Oz was this hardcore yes uh, prison show <laughs> that was what? just. And so we thought a comedy version of that. Hey, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> Well, uh, it was pretty intense. And um, I have a secret episode on my website at johnlear.com. If oh, you I go there, you that. can watch it. Uh, but, but, it's, but it's been pulled <laughs> off. Um, <laughs> but it was successful nonetheless. Fans loved it. It's just the advertisers were freaked yeah. out. Yeah. And um, right after we finished that, uh, we did a couple of other pilots uh, that didn't go, an animated pilot for Fox with Jeff Foxworthy that didn't go. And, um, and, and, and then we got this call from this other company we'd never heard of called Hulu and, <laughs> and, and they said, Hey, uh, we're doing reruns of your TBS show, 10 items or less. And it's getting huge, uh, viewership. Yeah. Uh, would you guys like to do an original show for us? We're thinking about doing original shows. And we were like, okay. Yeah, wow. And, uh, we came in and, um, I had been wanting to do a show based on the Donner Party, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> which is that famous uh, historical uh, cannibalism uh, yeah. story that happened out uh, in Truckee, Nevada. I didn't know what to do with it, but I just thought, God, it's so inappropriate. And there's, I don't know, there's something there, I thought. Yeah. And, Those um, usually make the best shows when they're a little uncomfortable. Right. I thought, I didn't know exactly what was there. And I also was a huge Monty Python fan and I loved historical comedy. So I wanted to do a historical comedy. So we settled on doing, um, you know, a, just a straight up Western, basically uh, a ripoff of, gu of Gunsmoke in a sense, just, yeah. you know, the, the town, a sheriff and, you know, this standard stuff. And Hulu bought it and they did uh, two seasons of it and it was a blast. It was a total yeah. blast. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's, I just came across of it, across it uh, on Hulu and, and I thought, well, I'll try on an episode because I, I like Westerns. And right. Love it. I mean, it's just, it's hilarious. And, and I know people say I get, I still get insiders at Hulu because they don't really share their numbers, but they say it's still one of their most viewed comedies on the, yeah. on the network. It's, it's really, uh, really, I love the fact that, that you're playing this kind of bumbling sheriff, but he's this excellent shot. Right, <laughs> right. We wanted to give him, like, we wanted to create this guy who's just kind of annoying. He's a pain in the ass. He's from Harvard. And he, like everybody from Harvard, he has to tell everybody he's from Harvard. That's right. Uh, and he's, bra he's a braggart, but he's just oblivious. But then we were like, but let's give him a secret power, you know, a, a superpower. Let's yeah. give him something that m makes it so that people will never, ever, that they'll still be like, all right, we'll keep him. And we <laughs> came up with, you know, the fact that he's an incredible shot. He's like the guy in the office. Um, yeah. My daughter just walked in and she goes, he's like the guy in the office. He yeah. is. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. really, uh, that's Scott. really who it reminded like me of. Scott. 
Oh, not Michael Scott? Who? No. Oh, okay. My daughter is 13. He's the one that went on the boat for, for, and left people. He went, he's the one who went on the oh, boat. Oh, uh, Ed boat. Helms. Ed, yes, Ed Helms. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right, daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good work, yeah. Jules. That's a good call out, yeah. <laughs> she, you know what's crazy is her generation are all, for some reason, into friends. The, yeah, the, it's big the, again. They love it. And I was on an episode of Friends. And yep, she, the uh, flashback, right? The, <laughs> the flashback. Wow, nice. Yeah. Uh, she you know, could care less about most of the stuff I do, but man, yeah, that Friends episode, she's just like, oh my God. <laughs> Her friends well, are like, what? And I only I, had two scenes in it. Yeah, you're popular. I know. Now suddenly I've, <laughs> I've done cool something. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I was trying to. I think Friends is probably the first time I'd seen you on camera, and they show Friends nonstop. So I've nonstop. seen that episode recently. I know, it, and that's part of the reason when Quick Draw came up, I was like, Ah, I know that guy. Let's yeah, that yeah, that Friends episode. I didn't realize it at the time, but did so much for me. You know, yeah. and uh, and that actually led because Bright Kaufman Crane, the producers who produced Friends, they uh, produced Jesse and Victoria's okay. Victoria. Uh, what was it called? Veronica's Closet. Oh, Veronica's uh, Closet. Yeah, I right. And they were all three back to back to back on Must See TV on Thursday night. Okay. Um, and so I got Jesse because of that of that Friends episode. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. so, I mean, you never know. You, you never, never know. know. And did, did you play her brother on that show? Is that? I played her brother. I had long hair at the time and yeah. glasses. <laughs> and the best part of that job was he didn't, didn't speak. So I, I had, a, he had, so it was an awesome job. So I got paid full rate. Okay. Yeah. But I didn't have to learn any lines or do anything. I just, it was amazing. God, that, oh. Oh, that was a good. Bad. I just sat in my trailer and played video games. That's all I did. It was amazing. <laughs> that was before kids. Oh God, yeah. that was a good time. Yeah, that's a good show. Well, and and you did the movie with her, Sweetest Thing. Sweetest Thing. That was by coincidence. I just happened uh, to book that job. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, you play. I love that scene though. You played the guy in the golf cart. Yeah. Yeah. Again, <laughs> the, the director knew me. And he just said, just improvise, do whatever you want. Uh, and they put me in a golf cart. The weird thing about that little scene was, is that they strapped an entire camera crew onto that golf cart. So what yeah. you couldn't see was there was a lighting guy, there was a sound guy and a camera operator, I think two camera operators, <laughs> and the director, all kind of rigged and connected to the outside of that Golf. I'd, like, I'd like to see that it was right it's that was the most interesting part of the whole thing and so but i drove it it wasn't remote control or anything so i'm driving this thing with six people in it you know what i mean yeah and i draw i'm driving it and i'm not even thinking about the job i'm just hoping i don't hurt anybody <laughs> and 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 the director is noticing that and he's like john you just do your thing don't stop keep going i'll watch out for everything you just do your do you know improvise that's right okay so i did it he said action and i just kept going and going and going and i crashed everybody into a bush the entire crew <laughs> and because he never said cut or anything and and everybody was pissed off at me and i'm like the guy he told that's me that's on him <laughs> it's on him but it was it was it wasn't a small bush either like i crashed wow. them and they were pissed <laughs> <laughs> did so how did you meet uh, or team up with uh, nancy well nancy uh, hauer is a, a director she uh, she was a, she started as an actor you know she was on Vo uh, voyager on star trek yeah, and she, yeah i saw that she was a uh, she was a broadway actor like a legit actor uh, from juilliard she she did uh, wow. um, shakespeare in the park in new york yeah. and, but she decided she wanted to do film smartly uh, <laughs> she wanted to direct and she was directing a, a low low budget independent movie um, and had uh, asked me uh, if I wanted to do a, she saw me uh, improvise. I was doing this kind of three person improv live show. Yeah. That had, that had a following kind of like, 
you know, kind of like being a garage band, you know, it was the same fans would come and see us every week. <laughs> I mean, we were sold out, but it was always the same people, you know. Did they stand at the front of the stage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Um, but she came to one of those shows and it was a pretty good show. I mean, it was pretty awesome. And uh, she asked me to do a part and I improvised in it and we just fell in love with each other in terms of, uh, uh, you know, platonically. It, yeah. Uh, I, just because she was just like taken with improv and how to shoot it. And I had been looking for somebody to edit improv and I right. never, I hadn't fought and she was editing her own work and I saw the edit and I was like, Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, she, this person knows what they're, she's amazing. She yeah, knows how to cut good. improv. And um, then together we did a film. Well, she, it was her film, but it was called Memron, which made fun of the Enron scandal, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is on my, I think it's on my website. Anyway, uh, you can find it. And yeah. it was, um, it kind of still holds up, but it was entirely improvised. And the two of us just kind of figured out this way. And this is before, you know, the office or any of that stuff. Right. So nobody, or before Curb Your Enthusiasm, nobody was really improv, full on improvising. Yeah. And uh, it just, that, that movie, Memron won, uh, the Slam Dance Film Festival, and that got us enough kind of juice to pitch our first show, and that show was Ten Items or Less, which we then sold to wow. TBS. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 great. Do you ever reverse the role? I mean, it, it, do you ever direct her? No, <laughs> <laughs> she she is uh, does not want to be in front of the camera anymore. She's like, forget yeah. that. She's smart. And yeah. uh, and I know enough about directing to know that I'm not any good at it. It's a hard job. Yeah, it's man. a hard job. I'm good at writing. I'm good at producing. But the directing part, eh, it's not. I, I've done a little bit of it, and it and I and it's not for me. It's uh, I let people who are who are who are good at it do it. Well, that's a good partnership. <laughs> What's that? That's a good partnership. You're bringing both bringing something to the table. Yeah, yeah, and then we write all we wrote all the scripts together. Even though it was improv, there were scripts. We just didn't show the scripts to the actors. Yeah. So the the executives would get a script, and the crew would get a script, and of course I knew where the show was supposed to go, and she did as the director. But the actors would just show up. They loved it. They would just show up, get into costume, and just we would just go. Yeah, just go. Yeah, then, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. It's kind of scary though if uh, if you're not used to uh, yeah. doing that type of work. I because yeah. I think if it were me, I would rather you just gave me the lines and let me let me memorize. Yeah, I mean there are two groups of people. There are people who are like, I want the lines, and people who are like, Oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Now I don't have to memorize the lines. And yeah, uh, yeah, and both are good, by the way. Like yeah. straight up actors who hadn't improvised, we found were really good at improv. They didn't like it at first. And they were nervous, and you know they yeah. would judge themselves. Uh, but they were uh, they were really good uh, at it. Yeah. Uh, cool. If you because they were because real actors are good at staying in uh, in character. Oh, there's my dog. Oh, there's your buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got an audience member here too, my son Hudson. Who this hey. is? How, this is how <laughs> bored we are over here. My daughter dyed his hair red with white flowers in it. That hair is awesome. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I wish I had hair to do that with. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you know the wheels, twenty years ago. You know, <laughs> you know the wheels are coming off the wagon when you start dyeing each other's hair. That's how bored we are. <laughs> but Hudson can rock it. <laughs> well, so so what are you uh, working on currently? Well, I mean. With the virus, everything is shut down. Everything is on everything, hold right now. Everything is on hold. So um, I always have side projects that I'm not really, I, I wouldn't really count them as, uh, uh, well, I have a podcast that I do called Generation Gab. G -A -B, yeah. <laughs> that I love doing. It's it's me with a uh, my friend Chase O'Donnell. She's a comedian. She does a, uh, she's a millennial. I'm a Gen Xer. And oh, we sort of talk nice. about the differences of our generation. So it, it's, it, but it's a comedy show. It, it, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, uh, so I, I, I do you little know, things. Like that's, that. uh, that's similar. Um, you know, we do too opinionated. It's, it's right. my son. And that's kind of the, you know, it's the generation gap 
the, the I know we need to do a that. we need to do a cross Hey yeah, we're podcast. <laughs> Let's figure that out. I don't yeah, know how to let do us it. Know. We'd love to come on. All right, we'll have to get my millennial and your Gen Z or millennial yes. to figure it out <laughs> because you and I will not know how to do it. But yes, yeah. uh, but so I, uh, I, I, I've been doing that, and a couple, I've been writing and preparing for the future. Once things get back going, I have, I have three projects that are in development right now. But one of them, is, uh, one's a single camera uh, comedy. Uh, one is a, um, uh, a, a, a reality show that I somehow Ooh. got myself involved in as a, yeah. as a producer. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, the third one is a, I shot a comedy festival, um, in, uh, in the desert. There's a comedy festival that happens in the desert outside LA every year. And I shot it with six cameras, uh, 4k nice. and total pro. And I, I hosted it and interviewed the comedians backstage. And I had just shot it and I was going to start cutting it together and figure out where to sell it when all this started. And interestingly, that's the project that probably has the most um, uh, purchase right now because it's already been shot. Yeah, it's already done. It's already done. So that's the one I'm doing most of my business on right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Have, cause I know you guys have, have, uh, worked on several pilots and, and yeah. putting your effort that that has to be difficult to well, I know it's difficult to pitch them period but yeah. it has to be difficult when you have something you think this is something but then it doesn't go anywhere oh it's brutal it's just so brutal it's because yeah. it really from start to finish by the time you get into a network to actually pitch the show it takes about a year takes about a year to get it all together, to put it together, figure out the idea, break it down, maybe shoot something that you're going to show as an example, get the agents on board, get any other elements, producers or actors that you think you might need, get the meeting set and come in and actually pitch it, <laughs> takes about a year. And then yeah. it basically takes another year after that to get it on the air. Yes, yeah. uh, to close the deal and to make the official pilot and for them to screen it and then to they do the pickup and then it takes time. Then you got to write those and shoot those. <laughs> it's, it's just it's the stupidest way to make a living in the history of mankind. <laughs> uh, it really is. It has and to be stressful. It's so stressful and it's so um, it's just ridiculous. And, and it's also <laughs> so much of it is sales. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and Nancy and I realized that half, you know, we were like, wait a minute, we're not artists, we're salesmen. That's right. You know? <laughs> gotta have an elevator pitch. You got it. Yeah. And then we're making, you know, decks and, you know, yeah. uh, you know, you know, all PowerPoint and, you know, we're salesmen. Well, you got to do your, you got to do your uh, deck, your, yeah. your story Bible, you yeah. know, all the different little, I've, I've learned some of these uh, terms. Yeah. And you got to do budgets and schedules yeah. and all, oh my. if it were, all I'd want to do is like, here's what I've done. Take it. <laughs> yes, I know. And they're like, no, we don't want that. We want somebody <laughs> who can actually get it done. That's right. Uh, what yeah. happens to the pilot? Uh, like if it doesn't get picked up, do you get it back or does it? You does can it get them back. It's, it's rare. It does happen. Uh, we had a, a pitch that we did that we that that we had taken out it 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 got some interest there was a a, um, a a deal that was being made that fell through and then years later we mentioned it i don't even know why we mentioned it we were in new york we were on our way to the airport we had a yeah. quick coffee with an mtv executive and and we i don't even know what made us mention it he was like oh my god i love that Send me, and we even kept talking. We were like, no, I don't think it's right for you. Trust the, <laughs> you know, we were like, uh uh. We're talk him out of it. <laughs> right. Because, and he was like, no, send it, send it. We sent it to him. We sold it without having to pitch it. He got the material and he was like, we want it. And they made a deal. We couldn't believe it. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, and then, of course, we did the pilot and then it didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> you knew. <But> you know, <laughs> But you get paid for that stuff, yeah. And um, so it's a it's a living. It's just weird. It's just very yeah, weird. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. That's I. That's uh, I. I would I, I would struggle. I think with just the unknown. Yeah, 
that's the, you know, it's funny um, in this new reality that we have where all my friends who had corporate jobs, you know, yeah. uh, are now home and they don't know what to do and how to start. And I'm like, listen, talk to me. If you want to know how to be unemployed, talk to an actor. We will, we'll walk <laughs> you through this because they're kind of freaking out. Like, what do I do? How do I do? All right. Here's what you do. You make a schedule. Even if you don't need it, it's all pretend, but you still right. you know, Stick to your uh, schedule. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we, we talk to a lot of actors, and and there's a lot of downtime for, for yeah. a lot of them. So, so a lot of them have side jobs. Some of them need to have the side job. Some of them do it just to stay busy. You know, yeah, them- yeah. I mean, that's how I got into writing and producing. I just wanted to be doing other things. And I've, I've always wanted to make my own stuff. That's always been my goal. I mean, yeah. act, the acting part of it was, even when I was on stage doing improv, it was more about getting my thought, communicating my thoughts to the audience rather than um, getting attention from them for being on stage. Like that was never, I always saw the acting as sort of just a vehicle of broadcasting the the stuff that I wanted to talk about uh, so I, you know I, I never really and it's funny because when we're in the edit room I'm always the first one to say ah cut my stuff because uh, I just never yeah. really um, I don't know it just I it just wasn't the top priority for me right well yeah that's and that's probably a good thing yeah I think it is because it because then I, I can watch myself I don't really care it's like another person I don't you know I'm not freaked out um, and I don't have some of the, uh, I don't deal with some of the stress that I see some of my actors who, friends who are just actors deal with, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, it so, makes sense. Yeah. Well, John, this has been great. I, thank you so much for taking Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. I, and we got it. I'm serious. We got to figure out a way to do a crossover yeah, podcast. Yeah, please. I, we would absolutely love it. I know my son is uh, disappointed he didn't get to come with me today, so he, uh, he would absolutely love it. He's uh, we we could just zoom it right, yeah, and then we just, could just the, zoom it. It just yeah. it'd be four of us instead of the two. So it, yeah, it, it, I'm it, not sure how to get our audio into the Zoom, but I would fi- we would figure it out. Like I said, the millennials will work it all out. Oh, yeah, they, I'm sure. I see other people doing it, and they're doing <laughs> like uh, the Tonight Show and stuff on Zoom. I, right, right. <laughs> we put a man on the moon. Damn it, we can do a four way Zoom. <laughs> to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, John, before I let you go, uh, go through again where where people can find you if they want to see more. Uh, the two places that are best are johnlear.com, J-O-H-N-L-E-H-R.com. And then the for my podcast, you can go to iTunes or any of the podcast places, and it's uh, Generation Gab, G-A-B. So it's like Generation <laughs> Gap, but it's with B. Gab. Or do, yeah. you, um, do you put those on uh, – uh, YouTube as well, or do you do? Yeah, uh, yes, because we're through Podbean, so I think it automatically uploads to YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very similar to what we do as well. Yeah, yeah, it's so great. I love it. I just love it. It's such a great way to get. It's you actually, it. you know, there's probably a comedy show about podcasting because you know there's so well, much of a bad rap that podcasts get. <laughs> for sure, <laughs> right. All right, I'm going to develop it. Does that mean I have to cut you in on it? You, you get just just give me a, you know, a little credit on the side. That's it. Okay, you got it. Well, credit <laughs> means money. Those that's, credits mean money. So you're going to make that I'm new to this. Get so, you know, if that's what it means. <laughs> I think you're going to need a lawyer. Let me help you. <laughs> Otherwise, they will screw you in the end. Oh, yeah, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, John. I'll let you get back. Yeah, to- take care of yourself out there in uh, West Virginia and, uh, you know, stay safe and do what they tell you to do, everybody. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> That's for sure. Please stay away from each other. Yeah, stay away from me. Just a little <laughs> bit longer. Yeah, we'll see you on the other side. All right, John. Thank you All much. Right. Talk to you again soon. Talk to you again Bye. soon. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Bye. So that was John. What a great guy. I had such a good time talking with him and I could have went on for, for much longer. Please take the time to, to check out uh, his shows. Um, there's three of them that, uh, that I know are out there. Uh, Jailbait uh, that he talked about is a little harder to find, but it's out there if you look for it. Uh, Ten Items or Less is on Crackle. 
I've been working through that uh, this week. It's it's so funny. It's so funny. And uh, Quick Draw right now is on Hulu. I watched all 18 episodes in about a day and a half. It's uh, it's it, if you like uh, westerns and you enjoy comedy, it's, it is great. Highly recommended. So that's the show for this week. Hopefully, we'll have uh, Brett with us uh, next time, or maybe you'll even get to see us uh, team back up with John. We'd really love to do that. Uh, but thank you. We appreciate you. You know, please take a minute if you have time to uh, to go to our Facebook page on uh, MeisterCon. You can see that uh, uh, as my background. Give us a like. A lot of fun stuff on there that I think you'll enjoy. So until next time, thank you. Good day. <laughs>